Hello everybody, this is Jasmina and in this video I'm going to talk about adjusting your BATSA's climate. And uh, this is akin, it's another way to balance your chart, uh, sort of like we did with elements, but it is different. This is focused on balancing your chart in a way that improves your problem solving skills and that improves your ability to succeed to you know make money and you know be able to move forward in life become you know get a promotion get a raise all that kind of stuff so it's focused on really your ability to solve problems it's different than balancing your batsa there we're talking about balancing the elements and this more has to do with your uh, like, like your overall view of life or your overall um, mental state, uh, how easy it is for you to easily deal with problems. I mean, if you have a balanced BATSA, you tend to be able to deal with problems and your emotions and everything in a much more balanced way. So you don't get angry too easily. You, um, you know, uh, and even when things make you angry, you approach them in a more methodical way. So you don't, it's not all emotions. So uh, this is some, uh, one way to look at that. But adjusting your BATSA's climate is more precise. So in the balancing your BATSA, you just use an element, you could use the yin or yang version of it, it doesn't matter. Here it's more precise because it's saying, you need to use the, um, that particular element's skill set to become a better problem solver. Now, which of the 10 gods that you'll need, and there's sometimes more than one, but which one you need will depend on your day master and the season, which is the month in which you were born. If health is an issue, you use the useful God instead of trying to balance your climate or balance your chart. You use the useful God. So it, you need to know what you need to fix in your life, what part of your, your, your chart do you need to work on. Now for climate adjustment, it's either going to be adjusted for temperature or it's going to be adjusted for humidity. Typically, it's not both, but one will look like you're doing both. So a batsa will be classified as cold, warm, or hot. Sometimes people will say hot, damp, or dry. So it's pretty clear that if you have a cold batsa, you need heat. If you have a warm or hot batsa, you need something to cool it down. So that's the temperature adjustment. If it's damp, you need something to dry it. And if it's dry, you need some water. It's pretty straightforward. And the seasons themselves also have some general properties which go into adjusting, automatically adjusting the climate. So sometimes a person born in a, in a certain season automatically has a better, a better overall chart for the climate based on the month they're born for the same day master. The spring months are the tiger, rabbit, and dragon months, and these are the Chinese solar months, not the lunar months, but the solar months. And it's considered to, well, it starts out as cool and goes to warm or hot, and it is wet. There's usually a fair amount of rain in the spring, for not everywhere, but on the climate as a whole. The summer months are the snake, the horse, and the goat months, and it's usually hot and dry. That's what its, its climate is. If uh, you're, uh, the autumn months are the monkey, the rooster, and the dog months, and this is, starts out warm, goes to cool, and it's dry. So the, uh, that's its general thing. And the winter months are the pig, the rat, and the ox months, and this is cold and wet. So you can pretty much tell 
what is needed. It's really the hot and the cold that need to have temperature adjustment. And these guys, are temperature are roughly okay. So they need the humidity adjustment. Now, just as in the overall balancing of your chart, when they say use a certain element, they actually mean developing and using the skills of people that, ha that already have a, a high level of that element. They are naturally good at certain things. That, you know, that element gives them these skills. You don't use the element as an element. You don't, if it says water, it doesn't mean you need to surround your house with a moat. Uh, it, it means something else. And a lot of people, even practitioners who have not, don't have a good understanding of Chinese and the Chinese language texts out there, they get this wrong because they don't know any better. And they didn't have a good teacher, usually. Now, generally, picking up a skill that you have e either a weak element or it's not an element that is in your chart, it's not easy. It's not meant to be easy. It's meant to be useful. It's meant to make your life better. That means you're going to have to work at it. And of course, a lot of people don't like that. They, they, want, they don't want to have to learn something new. And that's where the problem lies if they're not happy with where they are. So you need to answer these two questions. Are you interested in an easy life, one that you don't have to work and don't have to learn anything new? And you are, you are okay with your current level of success? The answer is yes or no. And if you want an easy life and you're not happy with your current level of success, the answer is no. Just to be clear about that. Or the other alternatives, are you willing to work hard, improve your skills to have a more fulfilling life and more success? This one might be no to begin with and yes second, but the answer then would have to be yes. So they come together. You, you know, you probably only want half of it, a half of it, but it's the second part that's the key. The answer is up to you. If you answer yes to this and no to this, and you're basically, that's fine if you're happy with your current life because you're doing okay. In, in whatever your level of desired life, you're doing okay. If that's true, you can stop watching this video because you, you don't need the information that I'm going to give you. Uh, because this is all about how to improve your life. Improve specifically your problem solving ability. And the more problems you can solve, the more success you generally have. So most of this information comes from a paper. Uh, it's really a, like a journal, almost like a journal article, but it's not from a journal. Uh, it, it seems as though it is a group, or maybe it's an individual, but they go by the name of the Great Tao is Simple. That, that is my best understanding. This, of course, is translated to English. Uh, and um, according to that, not everybody needs climate adjustment. Uh, and you can, I will try to put this in the, uh, in the information about uh, the, the, I want to put this link there. So th this is a Chinese language text, just so you know it, <laughs> to, uh, right from the beginning. But it, uh, I'll try to put this in the description of the uh, video so you can find this um, and click on it there. You're not going to click on, on the video because the video is just an image where I am narrating. So it's, of course, not an interactive thing. Now, if you're born in the winter and summer seasons, it says you need a temperature adjustment. 
the winter, of course, needs fire. It needs some, some heat. And the winter needs water because water cools. You may think you're adjusting for humidity, but what you're doing is adjusting for temperature. I think everybody knows when it rains, it cools down. It, it may be stickier. It may feel not so cool, but the actual temperature is reduced because as the rain falls, it continues to evaporate, and that cools the air. It's simple physics. Now, those born in the goat and the dog months uh, need water because these are the months that are dry. And these are two animal signs are the earth animal signs. And those born in the ox and the dragon month, again, two earth animals, they need dryness. So these two need the humidity adjustment. And then it goes on to say that those born in the tiger, rabbit, monkey, or rooster months need no climate adjustment. And because of what follows, I actually had my husband read this, and he is a native Chinese uh, speaker uh, and reader. So he says, yes, this is exactly what it says. However, when you read farther in this, it goes on to give adjustments for the tiger, rabbit, monkey, and rooster months, and for, any, for every day master. It tells you this. So it's self-contradictory, but I think what that means really, not said so well, but that these four months, people born in these four months tend to have less problems, and maybe they do not need an adjustment, but if they're having problems, he tells you how to adjustment, adjust it. That seems to be what's going on. But uh, it's, um, it is a little confusing. And he does have some Chinese spelling errors in here, uh, where he's mixing up the, the G, the yin, uh, yin earth with the snake. Now, those two characters are very, very similar. Uh, and I think he also has some issue with the dog. Uh, there's another character that is, uh, it has, a slightly different style stroke in one place, and it means two different things. And so there's a few spelling errors, but you, it's understandable. You know, it's like a typo. You can understand what it means. So although he does state that those born in the tiger, uh, rabbit, and monkey or rooster months need no climate adjustment, maybe it's not absolutely necessary. Maybe that's what he means. Um, they do still have a useful God. And you can still look at the chart balance, the overall elemental balance, that is. But they definitely have a useful God. Those born in the goat or dog months, they also have, they definitely have climate adjustment gods. Usually one, sometimes there's some extra auxiliary ones. But it's usually going to be metal and water. And they also have a useful God. And as does the ox and the dragon. But in this case, it's wood and fire. Now, these three are those, all the animals born in the spring or the fall or autumn. And get, finding the useful God is not easy for these people. And if you happen to fall into any one of those months, I can't tell you what your useful God is. I can tell you which group of elements may be your useful God, but I can't pick out the one. You need a real seasoned practitioner to be able to do this. And they probably won't be cheap because they'll be good. Uh, so, you know, it, it, but remember the useful God is about health. If you're not having health problems, you don't necessarily need to know what your useful God is. And in fact, you can experiment because you'll have a few to pick from and see if one makes you feel better. That is usually how you would do it if you don't want to pay to find out what your useful God is. Now, people born in the winter, they have their 
both their climate adjustment god and useful god is almost always fire. They do have to have some fire in their chart, though. And even if it's only in uh, one place in the hidden stem, that's good enough. People born in the summer have their, both their climate adjustment god and their useful god as water. Again, they must have a little bit of water, at least one little bit of water somewhere in their chart to have water as their useful god. And, uh, and if they don't, if, if the winter-born person has no fire or the summer-born person has no water, you're back to having to get probably a master to look at your chart because this is fairly rare and it's very hard then to determine what it is. And so, again, remember useful God is about health. Here, when it comes to climate adjustment, they usually give you an alternative if there is an issue where you don't have a, something that you really need that's missing. They often give you a different way to get to it. So it's not, it's not quite as bad as the useful God. Because, of course, to me, health is one of the most primary things. Because if you don't have health, it's very hard to succeed. So that's why useful gods are very important if you're not healthy. But if you're healthy, you know, don't worry about it. You can concentrate on being good, which is what this video was mostly about. Now, the elements... Uh, the animal signs have elements associated with them, and they're based on the 24 mountains. And then the, the four earth animals come in, and they come in on uh, basically in the positions where we have the non-element, non-animal sign. There's four of them, and that finishes everything. So what we have here is in the springtime, the tiger and the rabbit, which are wood animals, they are cold and wet wood or warm and wet wood. So this, you know, is warming up. Whereas the dragon is warm and wet earth. So these are the wet wood. This will be wet earth. The summer, it's dry. So every one of these is dry. The horse and the snake are associated with fire. And so it's, uh, it's dry fire. And it's either warm or hot. And the goat is hot and dry earth. And so this tells you something. This is why the dragon and the goat, the ox and the dog are treated a bit differently because it's a different element. And so in autumn, metal is the strong one. So, and the monkey and the rooster are metal. And so this is why it's, it's hot or warm uh, and dry metal, but the dog is warm and dry earth. And the winter months, they are cold and wet, either water or earth, where the pig and the rat, they have water as their element. So this actually tells you exactly what needs to change. So in the spring and the autumn, these are humidity adjustments because they're basically within a okay temperature range. So here we tend to adjust the humidity. And in the summer and the winter, we adjust the temperature. So there, in this article that I quoted earlier, I mean, the one that I'm primarily using, uh, there is usually a main climate adjustment element that is one of the 10 gods. And often there are also supporting adjustment elements Sometimes they are supporting the main climate. Sometimes they're adjusting, also having some effect on the day master. So uh, it can be it can be either one. So and what this article that I'm using agrees fairly well with other stuff that's out there, but it's not like this is the one set in stone and the one that's absolutely correct. But in general, it's correct. And it's at least on the right path. Now, the adjustment for each day master, again, will depend on the month of birth. So for the same day master, depending where, what 
month you were born, you may have very different recommendations. So this is why you have to learn this or have to know exactly what to do for your particular situation. Just as in using a useful God or balancing your batsa, using an element is learning, expanding, practicing the skills that given element naturally exhibits. This is not easy for most people, but this is how to improve your life. And if you don't work at this, your life is very unlikely to improve. You might get lucky, that's always possible, but relying on luck uh, usually makes you old and poor because luck is fairly hard to come by. So what do we mean by the skills? So wood, if it says you need wood as either a useful God or as a balancing, well, actually a useful God, it's more specific and you can watch the video about that. Uh, but uh, if we're talking about balancing your batsa or using a climate adjustment, we're talking about growth. That is learning, becoming better at something, expanding your knowledge base, expanding your skills in general. And uh, if it's the Yang version, it's a little more dedicated. It's a little bit narrower focused, but it's still learning more and understanding more and being able to approach a problem in a different way. It's just a little bit more restricted than the Yin. The Yin version is more flexible they tend to have a broader spectrum of interests, whereas the yang tends to be a little bit more restricted. So, for example, a, a yang wood day master or someone strong in yang wood may just be interested in one thing, let's say science, whereas a yin wood person could be interested in science and metaphysics and art and language and you know, they have a very broad spectrum of interest compared to the Yang. But it's all about learning and growing, becoming better, learning more, understanding more. Uh, that's what wood is all about. When it comes to fire, it's about passion and, and energy too. The Yang is more energetic. Uh, so they tend to be people who are quite physically active because they have a lot of energy and it feels good to get the energy out so that they, they can concentrate better on, on something else once they have, you know, worked out and, you know, gotten rid of some of the excess energy. And they usually are quite passionate people. They have some real interests and they, they do tend to be a little bit more restricted because, you know, they have this interest and, you know, the rest of it, yeah, they'll work on it, but it's not a big deal. They really do have a passion. The yin is more transformational. So this is the idea of, okay, they still have a lot of energy. What they want to do, however, is not just work out or play games. They may be someone who like builds a house or, or builds furniture. They take the raw materials of wood and they create something out of it. So they transform things. So, so they, they still want to do things. They have the energy to want to do things, but they don't just want to exercise. They want something real to come out of their efforts, you know, something that can actually be used. So it is a different type of viewpoint, but they still both use energy and they both use passion. For Earth, this is more about stability. And uh, this is probably a bit more problematic in our current time when things are changing so fast. People that have a lot of earth in their chart tend to be uh, not so comfortable now because things are changing fast and, and they're just not very comfortable with it. So this is the one that has the most challenges. But sometimes 
you need some stability. Uh, for example, if what you will see later, water is all about adaptability. Sometimes they're too adaptable and they need some stability. So uh, the Yang version is very stable. This represents, is usually represented by a mountain, a mountain mostly made of rock that doesn't change. It takes millennia to see changes in, in a mountain, uh, unless humans have something to do with it, uh, or a volcano. Um, but they're, they're very, very stable. Whereas yin is the, represented by the soil where we grow plants that feed us and feed animals that feed us. So this is more nurturing. It is still wants stability, but it is, its point of view is different. Uh, the, the, these people like to help others, whereas these people are just more, more like, let's just keep the status quo. I'm happy. Uh, I help others, yes, but you know, my, my whole point of living is to feel secure, whereas these people are trying to help others feel better and feel more secure. So it's a slightly different viewpoint. For metal, it's mostly about focus. Yang tends to be more in depth and smaller in scope, whereas yin is broader and a little less depth. But they can focus. I mean, they, they look at things a little bit broader and then they pick something to focus on. Whereas yang pretty much zooms in to one place pretty quickly. So it's just slightly different methods of becoming focused. Adaptability is water. Water, you know, it, it uh, conforms to the container it's in. So it's extremely adaptable. Uh, the Yang version is a bit more dedicated to, uh, to change for change's sake, perhaps. Um, and they tend to go more deep into okay, this needs changing, so let's see how far that can go. Whereas yin is a bit more, it's less depth and broader, just like for, uh, for metal. It, it says, yes, all these things can change. Any one of these is better than doing nothing, but maybe we don't zoom in, go really deep, really fast, because a lot of the, for example, uh, earth people will have a real problem with this. So it is it is broader and shallower, but it still is all about looking at various different aspects, accepting a lot of different viewpoints, and, and they're okay with it. And, and it doesn't bother them, whereas it would bother someone who has a lot of earth in their chart. Now, as we go through this, you may see there are some combinations of day, master, and month that the day master strength can come into play. And this is the table, and you've seen this before if you've watched uh, the video I'll talk about in a second. Uh, this is actually just from there. So you find out what month you were born, and you find out, find your element, your day master element, and this will tell you what, what strength it is. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, also, the overall chart strength may also come into play. So there, this, this uh, I have the video that talks about day master strength and chart balance, tells you both things in the same video. If you need to understand that, you can, you can watch that. But the BATSA calculator, the free BATSA calculator website uh, has, um, uh, has, I think it will tell you the overall strength. It won't tell you this, but this is an easy table to use. So you'll get that if you um, do the free BATSA calculator uh, website analysis. Joey Yap doesn't tell you this, but uh, he does in a more general way by looking at your chart. But this is very specific. Now, I am going to be pronouncing these in the Chinese way. I'm not going to be saying yang wood, yin wood, and that, that gets really old. So you may want to take a screenshot of this 
So I will have the character written in Chinese, and then you will have this listed here so you know what I'm talking about. And these are pronounced jia, yi, bing, ding, and I'll try to be very careful with those two because they're very close together in pronunciation. Wu, ji, geng, xin, ren, and kui. And I might pronounce it as kui, more of a K sound, which is what I usually hear. But that may be my weirdness in my ears. Or it might actually be more of a Cantonese pronunciation. But either way, it's the only one that sounds even somewhat like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically just providing you a English language translation of the text from the Great Taoist Simple article that I mentioned quite a bit ago. Uh, but I will also tell you what it means in terms of actions. And I have a very specific reason for doing both. I could just go to what does it mean? But I think you miss a real important point if I just do that. I want to make it clear that when the Chinese text says use an element, it means perform certain actions or gain certain skills. This idea, use an element, is a type of code. That's like saying, I'm, if you say, I am a Yang Fire Day Master. If you tell me that, I know that you're very likely to be very passionate, have quite a bit of energy, uh, you can really get things done, and uh, that you're a go-getter. I mean, that's code. The idea, uh, fire day master, that's code for these properties of a person. And that's exactly what using an element means. It's code for properties of basically that person. And that is a person who has that element. So... Unless you take a class in Qimen or Batsa, you won't understand this. And of course, I have taken classes in both, especially I just recently finished a Batsa class. Uh, and if you don't understand this, and you don't understand Chinese, and you don't understand this whole idea, you see people who are practicing, and that's I'm air quoting here, uh, Batsa, with the idea that, oh, using an element means actually physically putting that element into your life. That's dead wrong. That's not what it means. Remember, this is code. And so if you hear someone say, oh, you, have, you need fire, so wear red, they don't understand this. And this is really, really crucial if you want to improve your life. So someone tells you to wear red, as, as a Batsa practitioner, you pretty much can ignore them. Uh, and and uh, because they really don't understand this key point. So if you are watching more than one of the day masters, one of the elements, I do both the yin and yang together, then uh, you can go to this time and it will tell you, uh, it will give you to this slide, and uh, you can just start watching the, the rest of the information and skip the intro because the intro will be the same. So now we move on to Yang Earth. Now, Yang Earth represents stability, and it's usually the most stubborn, most disliking of change, uh, most stable day master out there. It needs wood to break it up, and, and it needs to be broken up to become useful. And, and basically, what a yang earth broken up, it becomes soil, and that nurtures life. So that is the issue for the yang earth day master. They need to find a way to loosen up, uh, to be able to become productive citizens. So this, uh, we always start with spring. Spring is a, uh, when wood is the strongest. Now wood controls earth. So this does tamp down a bit on the earth strength. Now you will notice I'm always leaving tiger and rabbit 
also monkey and rooster, they'll be grayed out because the, the article, the, the paper that I am basically translating from says that these four animal signs don't need climate adjustment, although he lists climate adjustment, or I don't know if it's a he, the people behind that do. So I, I assume what it, it really means is that uh, they're less likely to need it, but if you have problems, then you would use this to adjust the climate. So because the wood weakens the earth, you need a little bit of fire, uh, the, the bing, to produce the earth. Uh, and you want to have some jaw, jaw wood, to break up the earth so that basically water can penetrate, life can grow, it, you know, it's kind of a circle. And uh, when the water, when the, when the tree roots break up the soil, uh, that allows uh, the water to penetrate. This is re respective or representative of rainfall. This is gui. And that allows the trees to grow. So it's this kind of circle. And this, uh, this allows you to, I mean, the, the, uh, the, this guy, the um, Wu, likes to have things stable. And this helps stabilize things, but not be lifeless. So that's the idea behind all this. And uh, basically, the same thing is true for a Wu uh, Daymaster born in the rabbit month. And for the uh, for a Wu Day Master born in the uh, tiger, I mean the dragon month, uh, you have slightly different things. You actually have to break up the soil first because the dragon is, is also soil. So that is even more, more stubborn and more fixed in their ways than either of these two. So you really need the jaw wood to break up the soil. And then you need a little bit of fire to still create some because this does weaken it a bit. And you then also need the, the goi, the rainfall. And so the plants and the trees continu continue to grow. So you don't want to be, you do need growth with either of the, uh, of the uh, Earth Day Masters because you need you need, uh, you know, otherwise they're too static. So they do need growth. So what does this mean overall? You need a passion. So since, since uh, a yang wood, I mean a yang earth doesn't like change, if they develop a passion, it's, they're able to change. And, uh, and they want to change. And this will allow education to expand their viewpoint, uh, even if it's only in that one subject that they're passionate about. And this will allow also the flexibility to be able to actually use that education. And that can change your life. That can make your life much better, especially if it's tied to a passion. Now, education does not necessarily mean formal education. It can mean informal, it can mean a apprenticeship, it can mean just reading books even. So it's gaining information. And of course, if you're going to use the internet, you have to be a little careful because there's a lot of misinformation out there. So, but if you're not talking about something political, oftentimes the information out there on the web is pretty stable and pretty accurate. But when it comes to politics, it's 90% garbage. So uh, you have to be careful. Now, of course, the same thing applies for the rabbit. When it comes to the dragon, education comes first. That allows a passion to be created. And then that leads to more flexibility, which is what a Yang Earth needs. It needs more flexibility to be able to deal with today's life. I mean. Maybe two centuries ago, a, a Yang Wood, uh, I mean, a Yang Earth Day Master may have been very happy because things didn't change very much. 
but in period nine, things are going to change even more than they changed in period eight. So a definitely a Wu Earth day master needs to be able to expand and become more flexible and just deal with it. You know, you, you may not like it, but you have to basically understand it enough that you can at least accept that point of view. You don't have to agree with it. You just have to understand it and not fight it. Because when you're fighting it, all you do is waste your energy and it's not going to change anybody else. So when we come to the summer, fire is the strongest. So actually that does feed earth. So it, it doesn't need quite so much uh, uh, um, really any other type of really fire. Uh, you can use the earth again, I mean the wood, the job wood to break up the soil, but it you have to be a little careful. This is still kind of on the cool side, so a little bit of fire is good, but uh, you, but Uh, the water, of course, allows the trees to grow, and but it, it, it does it at a more moderate rate. You don't want to break up the earth too fast uh, because then that is not good uh, in terms of that kind of destroys your inner being. So this is where things can grow a little better. Um, usually it's, uh, this is the time when plants are really maturing and really growing. And so this is something you have to be a little careful with. When it comes to a, a Wu uh, Earth Day Master born in the month of the horse, uh, you need water. Uh, this water it, it represents like the ocean, and it makes a definition between land and water. And so this sort of confines or uh, keeps the earth from becoming too strong, which is important because that's, again, it's very, very much stubbornness. So you still need some wood, job wood, to break up the soil. Now, job wood represents a tree. The roots of a tree can break up the soil a lot better than the roots of a small plant, although they still do work. And there are some bushes that still have very deep tap roots, which do break up the soil too. But usually you're talking about trees. And then you um, could use just a little fire to make sure that you have a reason for doing all this. That's, remember, fire means passion. And uh, if you are a Wu Earth Day Master, born in the month of the goat, it's quite a bit different. You really need water. You need, uh, you need some flexibility because this is already an earth animal. It's going to make it even more earth, and that's going to make you more stubborn. So you really need the flexibility, and of course you need a passion to have a reason to become flexible. Now, if the earth is really strong in the chart, it's going to be fairly strong, but it could even be stronger, then you definitely need some jaw wood to break it up. And it's really quite critical. It's as critical as the water. So this is how you interpret that. Or this is what it says, actually, translated into English uh, on that web, the web page I mentioned, uh, the paper I mentioned much earlier. Now, what does this actually mean? So for a Jaw Wood Day Master, I mean a Wu, a Wu Earth Day Master, born in the month of the snake. Education is important. It's actually the key. This is where you need to start. Now, you do have to have a balance between passion and flexibility, but the education will bring both of those out and help that. Uh, if passion and flexibility is missing, it only creates more stubbornness. So, so this is something that you have to bring into your life. And that's usually through passion, I mean, sorry, through education. Education tends to be the key. 
and that will lead to passion and flexibility. For the Wu Earth Day Master born in the month of the horse, basically you have to decide that you need to rein in your your rigidity, you know, the your stubbornness. You you must need to decide that you need to change. Uh, because it has it usually starts with the flexibility, the realization that you need to be more flexible. And that has to come before you decide on what you're going to do about education. And that education will create a passion and all together will help you grow as a person, which is a, usually what people need to do to move forward in life. They, they need to be able to grow, learn new things. And the, again, the education does not have to be formal. It can be anything where you are learning more and, and growing, that is changing as a person, understanding more, and understanding how to handle more problems. Remember, because this is all about being able to solve problems. And if you're really stubborn, you have one way to solve a problem, and if that doesn't work, you're stuck. This is why flexibility is such a big issue for people who have the uh, day master of earth, either yang or yin earth. So for a Wu earth day master born in the month of the goat, flexibility also comes first. Now, this flexibility is a little bit more focused, a little bit more dedicated. That is, you really have to work at it. And you usually are a little bit deeper in just one or two subjects. Whereas this flexibility is very broad. You don't have to be super focused and you don't have to be in super in depth, but you have more, uh, a broader uh, looking at flexibility or a broader way to look at life than, than perhaps uh, someone born in the month of the horse. Now, if earth is high, uh, you're going to be using education to reduce the stubbornness. But the flexibility is what will create the passion and will help you, again, become less stubborn and actually be able to learn new things much faster and be much better at whatever job you're doing. So here we see again these two are grayed out because they're not supposed to need a uh, climate adjustment, but they do list something. So this is a Wu Earth born in the month of the monkey. They need the Yang fire for passion. And of course, they need to be able to break up the soil because uh, here metal is strong. That actually does weaken these guys a bit. That's one of the reasons why they need a passion. Uh, but uh, they, you need the water for the trees to grow. So that is why uh, this is why those two are necessary. And this just allows you to become uh, more, more skilled at whatever you do because you understand things better. And uh, this, this one, you know, I would say that if we're talking about any of the animal or any of the day masters that need this, even though these, the four don't, I think the earth is probably one that needs it the most because, especially for period nine, because we've got so much change going on and they don't like change in general. So they, they need help here. And so I would say you probably will need this at some point if you do have a Wu uh, Earth Day Master. So for a rooster month, it basically doesn't necessarily need the trees because this is a point where the metal becomes stronger. That weakens the earth all by itself. You don't, you don't necessarily need trees, although it's not bad, but this is a dry month. You know, this is, uh, the whole season is dry, so the moisture helps with the dryness and just makes it easier for things to happen. And, of course, this is all about flexibility and that leading to passion. And for the dog, it actually, this is getting to the point where we're 
we're getting colder and uh, that that so this is why we add a little bit of fire a little bit of passion in here to uh, uh, to create things now if you have metal in the chart and because this is also a metal season then you want to use the the water first before you use the fire so you need to become more flexible before you try to find a passion so again we'll go into the real meaning of this you're going to use passion and flexibility so that you can get a type of education that will open up your world and make it easier for you to succeed because it reduces your stubbornness you're more able to understand and use other things even if you don't necessarily agree with them if they work you know you're going to use them and but here the passion and the flexibility generally come first and then that's how you can pick out the right education and sometimes this is a bit hard uh, and and of course you could go the other way around but you probably will end up going back to school later um, if, if it's the formal education you're going for or maybe you apprentice after you've been to college and you know didn't didn't complete a college degree because you know you found it wasn't for you but uh, again this doesn't mean formal education it can mean other things too for the rooster persons uh, with this day master born on the rooster month they basically just need a little bit of passion and flexibility and just automatically this is going to reduce their stubbornness now education is not necessary to accomplish this but of course education in general is not a bad idea and it may it may come as something you decide you need not me or the author of this these things telling you this is what you need but you may decide this yourself and you shouldn't avoid education it's just that it's not required here now for the dog uh, you basically education is the key to becoming less stubborn and it will create a passion and it will allow you to be more flexible in how you approach problems but if there's metal in the chart you want to you want to use flexibility before seeking a passion so you can you will still use education but you focus on when you're in class to just focus on understanding these different viewpoints and not necessarily actively seek a passion just understand first then the passion will come about on its own now in the winter months uh, this water is very high water controls earth I'm sorry earth controls water it's the other way around but that weakens water I mean weakens earth because it it spends its energy making the water muddy so this does weaken it so that's why passion becomes more important and we still need the trees because we need those roots to break up the fixedness of the soil and uh, uh, because this is remember this is yang yang earth represents a mountain which is really hard to overcome and so you really need to work at becoming less stubborn now the rat and the ox have the same rules you actually here you look for passion first and then it more naturally you're going to have trees breaking up the uh, the earth now again what does this mean here you start with education then that will lead to a passion for these two guys it's the other way around you start with a passion and you realize what kind of education you need and that also reduces your stubbornness increases your chances for success because now you have more skills more ways to tackle a problem it's as simple as that so now we go on to yin earth this represents nurturing and usually a bit more consistency and um, and it's a lot more flexible than the yang earth it does need fire to ignite a passion 
and also to become strong enough to avoid being misused. That is because the yin fire is often very accommodating and they can get into situations in, in negative relationships where they're being abused. And so it's really, they do need fire to be stronger. And of course, fire strengthens earth. So in the springtime, uh, we, wood is the strongest. Now wood creates fire pretty easily, but we still really need fire because this is still barely warm. And, uh, but if there's too much water, that can be a problem uh, because the it, water will weaken the earth because it, uh, it, it takes, I mean, the earth will muddy the water and it will weaken the earth. Basically, it just creates mud. And so that's not very useful in, in life. Uh, so if that's true, you need a little bit more of the toughness of the yang earth. And if there's too much earth, you definitely need the metal, I mean the wood, to break it up. And if there's too much wood, you use metal. So this one is real tricky. It depends on what's in your chart. And if you have a balanced chart, basically you just need fire because you don't have too much of anything else. Now the, uh, the yin, uh, the ji, Earth in uh, born in the rabbit month, they need to they need the trees to basically strengthen the gentleness because tree roots hold soil together better than most plants do. So this is uh, this is important, especially in difficult situations. So think about that as a hillside. Trees really can hold the uh, soil together, and the water strengthens the trees and uh, and then the fire here creates the earth so it gives some more strength to to the G day master and so altogether this strengthens the person keeps them uh, keeps keeps them from being basically abused now the uh, the G Earth, born in the Dragon Month, it uses pretty much the same thing as the rabbit, but it's in a different order. So it needs, it needs passion first, and then uh, the, the roots of the Jia wood strengthen the earth, and of course, so does the fire, and then the water strengthens the trees. So it's, again, one of these circle type things. So what does this mean? This means that passion is needed for the Jia, uh, earth born in the tiger month. Passion is needed. That's first. And if you have too much water, you use stability, which is usually routine, or sometimes it's a very supportive person, a, a good relationship. Uh, if there's too much earth, you need to use education to understand what is needed. And this, again, doesn't have to be formal education. If there's too much wood, you need to use focus and determination basically to stick to a single topic because this, uh, uh, this when, you, when it comes to education, basically, you need to, to not let the wood which does weaken the earth and the water that uh, is there um, to make you a little bit scattered. So that is a possibility. But again, this really all depends on what is in your chart and you may only need passion. If you have a relatively balanced chart for all these elements, you're okay. The G earth born in the month of the rabbit Education comes first. This guides you to, uh, first off, nurture, nurture your interests, nurture your, your desire to help people, and it gives you self-confidence. And this is the big key. The self-confidence is what you really need. 
It will also help with flexibility and will help you find a passion. And that will, if, you got, if you're flexible and you have a passion, the quality of your nurturing is better. And so you become more successful at what you're doing. And most of the time, G Earth people want to, I mean, they, they naturally want to nurture. And so you will already be heading in a certain direction, and this only helps. So the G, Earth, born in the month of the dragon, passion is the first thing. This fuels your ability to nurture because you have a real passion, a certain thing you want to do. Education and flexibility will increase your self-confidence and prevent people from abusing you, your help. That is, you, you won't become a person that everybody goes to uh, and, and you know, just saps your energy. You are tough enough that you'll be able to say no when a no is warranted. And that's an important thing because that can be a problem. Never saying no can be a problem for a G Earth person. So in the summertime, everything is the same. So this is a bit quicker. Uh, you need some, it's dry, so you need some water to moisten this dry soil so that plants can grow. And you need some sun also so plants can grow. So the whole here, the whole idea here is growing plants is nurturing things. So this basically is all the same. You need flexibility and a passion. And that is going to fuel the nurturing qualities of the yin earth and make them better at doing what they want to do. Education is not necessary, but it usually doesn't hurt. And it just depends. You may be able to just, quote unquote, learn on the job and you'll have enough. So it, it, isn't, uh, it isn't an absolute necessity here. Now for uh, G Earth, was born in the month of the monkey uh, and or the rooster, same rules. The, the fire creates some more earth, which is, this is metal, metal will drain earth, so that's why we need some fire. And we need some water to moisten this dry soil. This is a climate uh, adjustment because fall is also a dry uh, season. And uh, so they're the same. And for the dog, you need to add trees. Uh, that breaks up the soil. And if wood is scarce in your chart, uh, the fire uh, is the one that really creates the earth and the water is still needed. So it kind of goes back to this guy. But uh, hopefully you've got some wood uh, in your chart because this is really the more important one. And remember the dog is an earth element and this is earth and so that makes it rather a, makes a, a person more stubborn and more fixed because a dog is a yang earth animal. So what does this mean? Well, passion and flexibility. And that will bring out the best qualities of the G. And here, you just add education. In fact, education comes first. And when you do that, you're going to automatically lead to the passion and flexibility. But if you don't have much wood or no wood in your chart, then the passion and flexibility, it, it goes back to this one. And, uh, and you can still do education, uh, but it probably won't be quite as effective. But I think usually education doesn't hurt, uh, especially if you don't have to pay a lot of money for it. Uh, so, for example, uh, start out at a community college if there is that kind of a... Uh, thing in wherever you're living. And so it might be called a junior college, in, who knows what it's called in other countries. But uh, in the U.S. it's usually called community college. Now for the winter months, we have water is high. Water is muddied by earth, so the earth is actually weakened because it's muddying the water. And it's cold uh, and it's wet. And so what we need, of course, is fire. They always need fire. And this, it's, it's all the three elements are the same, 
but it's used slightly differently. Uh, so we definitely need the fire. And here, the yin, this month, the uh, yin water is strong because it's, uh, after all the summer rains and everything, basically the oceans and the lakes are usually relatively full. And so we use the earth to weaken the water because the water is what will uh, weaken the soil. Um, but if earth is high, then you definitely need the trees to break it up. These two are the same. And uh, you need, of course, the, the bing for, for warmth because this is winter. If water is high, and this isn't necessarily needed, it, you have to look at your chart. If water is high, you use the earth, which is, you know, stability. But if you don't have high water, you don't need to worry about this. But if earth is high, then you need the jaw wood to break it up. So it's basically, I think by this time, you might actually be getting it. Passion is needed to fuel the nurturing qualities of the G earth. And stability is needed if the water is high. And in this case, it is more likely to be high because of the month of birth. But if earth is high, you need to use education uh, to help guide, guide you to the right um, things that also improves your self-confidence. It makes you a better person. Um, and you're more able to help people. When you feel confident, you know how to help them. And basically, the same thing is true for these guys. There's no real difference here. Uh, you, uh, education helps and uh, under the same type of circumstances. And for this month, because Ox is a Earth month, uh, it is very likely that you have a high level of Earth if you have this situation, because you also, Earth is your day master. And so probably education is most important for the Ox, just because they're very likely to have high Earth. So that's it. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please uh, feel free to either leave a comment or email me here if you have questions. I do not do batsa, just so you know that, uh, because it's uh, I, I haven't I haven't been able to afford a class that gets in depth enough enough for me to really feel confident about this. Plus, I really don't have time. Uh, but uh, hopefully, somebody else this will inspire them to really go in depth with batsa and they can they can start their own channel thanks again for watching